Well, I think you have to look at Le Mans as it's the most important, most sort of special race in the world. It has the greatest history of any race. Without a doubt, there's no driver in the world that wouldn't like to win Le Mans. All right, Derek, thank you for having me to have a chat. It's talking a to me about this. No, it's very much a pleasure, thank you. What was Le Mans like? Your, your first, your first was, it, was it daunting? Was it any different to any other race you've been, been in? Well, I think you have to look at Le Mans as it's the most important, most sort of, well, special race in the world. Um, it has the greatest history of any race, and it's 24 hours, and it's an endurance race. And without a doubt, there's no driver in the world that wouldn't like to win Le Mans, would like to do Le Mans, and, and then win it as well, if possible. And there's only one or two can ever do this, because there's only one race a year, you know. But uh, it was very important to do it for me. The strange thing about racing for Ferrari at Le Mans at that point was that really there was no guidance. They didn't tell us anything. You know, we had a driver's briefing the day before the race after qualifying. I remember the driver, I thought, well, this is really going to be intriguing because I'd read the books about Le Mans. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, they're going to sit us down and say, look, you know, we want you to do this time. You want to watch this, you'll use these revs and watch this and watch that. And you won't get in the way of him. We want you to try and get up to the top three or four places. Stay there. Don't get into trouble. I expected that sort of, you know, a, a, a sort of a guidance. And we just went in and they said, OK, the race is starting at three o'clock or four o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Uh, don't forget your overalls and so on and so forth. And that's it. And I walked out with, with Ronnie. I said, well, that wasn't very good. We've never done them all before, and they're still not telling us. It's quite a lot. Yeah. I don't know that anybody well, can really guide you like I couldn't guide you. But, um, you know, I mean, I suppose if I was asked to guide you, I could give you some guidance now with my experience. But with all their experience, they couldn't help me out. So, <laughs> Ronnie, I went off, and it didn't really matter. I mean, they didn't say, we want you to keep out of the way of the other team. We don't want you to do this. They didn't say, don't take the lead in the race, hang back into third place. And it, 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 we, we sort of went into the race going, well, what are we going to do? We just drive fast and hope we win, which we didn't. So for you, what, what, what makes Le Mans so special? What makes it stand out? Up here? You know, it, was a, it wasn't a race I ever wanted to do because my dream was to be a Formula One driver, as it is all of us, really. Mm -hmm. And we came through that route, three, two and one. And Le Mans had no interest in. But I remember I used to listen to Sterling Moss when he drove there and, and, and you know, when I was a kid, listened to him on, t on the radio and stuff like that when I was at school. But it never really had that much appeal to me. It was Formula One I wanted to do. But then when you get there to do it, and you you see all the history there, and it really is the most important race in the world. And only when you drive in it and get involved with the teams and the sponsors do you realize how vital it is. And mm. it's, it's more vital than anything. And it's strange thing is you talk to a lot of F1 drivers over the years, I wouldn't say everybody, but they all would love to have had Le Mans there as a victory on there. I wonder why Dad never had a go at it. Well, he, he, I'm sure I mean, he had the opportunity. Well, I know. He, well, I mean, he, he could have done. I mean, the he, I won the. Can you imagine if I'd driven with him the year after? We drove together. Well, he was in our team in '74, in the Mirage, which I did mention. To yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, uh, the, it's a car. Uh, yeah, the, in that car there, the second picture down. See it on the left. This one here. Yeah, that's Jackie and I winning in '75. Your dad was driving in that team in '74, oh. and he probably had the opportunity to drive in '75, but he was. <sighs> quite naturally wanted to do Formula One. Well, yeah, he was very, um, he was very Motivated. focused. Motivated, and I don't yeah. blame him. I mean, so would I. It didn't mean as much, but, and, and um, you know, I, I actually drove... Well, I, I wonder, actually, well, after his retirement, well, I suppose after his retirement, he, well, he didn't want to drive another racing car I again. I think it had enough. The, yeah. the last thing he needed was 24 hours. Yeah, exactly. In a yeah, way. Pretty, so it was very totally tortuous. Tired. I think, I think I, yeah. particularly the, you know, after 76, I think it was rather painful for him. Yes, yes. You know, driving crappy car. Well, yes. Not, not winning cars, but, but it's a, but the thing is about doing Le Mans is it's a it's just a different pressure. So in in comparison to other races, obviously it's much longer. But how how physically demanding, or how much more physically demanding is it? I mean, do you have to just keep on going and hope the car does the same, or a bit more to it than that? Maybe. Um, you know, you you th obviously you know what the car's limits are. You you know, and if you're lucky enough to have done it before, you know when you drive it and it's good, you know it's good. And when I drove the Jules car, the yellow 936, it was so beautiful. We'd driven the Mirage in 75, but we never knew. I didn't know what it was like to win. I think that's the answer. Mm -hmm. When you've not won, you're going, Ooh, what's it going to be like? Are we, you know, and you're very much more apprehensive. Once you've won it, it's like, well, you know, I've done it now. So 
that's sort of over that major hurdle. But I mean, it, it is very hard on the car physically, but most of all, you've, you mustn't overdrive it. You have to drive slowly, but there's a way to be, to drive really hard, but conserve the car. And you really had to, mm. I mean, you can imagine, I mean, in those days you had no power steering, of course, anything like that. But I mean, you know, the gearbox, you had, how, how, I have no idea how many gear shifts you do in 24 hours, but it is an amazing amount. And so that's all done by you. And I remember in 74 when, as I said, you know, could well have, when, when your father drove us at Nürburgring, I mean, literally, because Mike Hellwood had been my teammate and he crashed it at the ring. And then I got in and drove dad's car with him. But um, at Le Mans that year, I came in after three hours and I said to Mike, he said, how is it? He was leaping in. And I said, well, I said, I don't think we're going to last. I said, it's really snitchy, snicky into third gear. It really doesn't like you dropping into third. He said, oh, right, we'll be home for dinner then. But of course, we carried on and finished fourth. <laughs> but because we took it easy, we, we took the shifting easy. You had to watch the revs, you had to watch the fuel consumption, but you still drove it flat out in the corners. It's just that you might have to back off on the straights and get a tow off a 911 to save a bit of fuel, that sort of thing. They varied over which years, but it was, you always had a limitation of fuel. And that made it interesting. I mean, literally in the middle of the steering wheel in, in 84 and five, in the 962s, we had a thing the size of a matchbox lid, if you like, in that middle bit of the wheel, because we didn't have all those buttons they have now, but just in the middle of the three spoke wheel. And on that, it would have 11, 12, 13 written across the top, like that wide, across the top. And then down the side, it'd be one to 13, which is the number of laps that you were going to do on a tank for. You might do. So we, we've talked about prep for the race. Yeah. Now, in so in the race, any, any tips in particular, little bits of advice, not too much, because I'll forget it all, but any, <laughs> any key bullet points for me <laughs> to You can always think. ask me again, you know. <laughs> um, um, one thing is I never slept. So I, I, I wouldn't be able to do that, I don't think. Pardon? I wouldn't be able to do that. No, I, I don't, think. well, I couldn't. I find I'm too keyed up when I get out. And um, I think it's because you're concentrated so hard in the car that when you get out, you can't go, <laughs> People well, I probably, can. I probably wouldn't be able Some to of the guys crash out. out. You know, of course, it, you might do if there's four of you in a car, which these days there seem to be, and you end up getting eight hours off. I mean, you may as well go back to the hotel. Mm. <laughs> but I mean, it's so uncomfortable in motorhomes and the noise of the racetrack the whole time. Yeah. But I mean, if, you, if you're one of those people that can, I know so many drivers that can just crash out for an well, hour. Ollie, Ollie Webb, who interviewed yeah. uh, last week, he said if you can sleep, he also said that's the same thing. Yeah. Try yeah. and sleep if you can. Yeah, no, obviously sleep if you can. I mean, you know, you're, you're there in time. You, you know, they'll come and tell you when to be ready to get in the car. M make sure you've got everything with you. And you go out and you go, oh, hell, I forgot my glasses or my hands device or something. You don't need, not that I ever race with glasses, but <clears throat> um, you need, you know, just try and be organized, you know, and in a way, don't expect somebody else to do it. You need to have it all right there. So if they suddenly say, quick, he's coming in next lap because he's got cramps or he's, or one of his eyes is shut or something you can just throw your stuff on and go. The adrenaline makes you drive and your desire and your passion to, to win. Mm. And you're, it's just, you, you, go, you do things amazing. And after you, did I really do that? You know, and you find your lap times as quick as you've done the whole time. Yeah, thank you.